Welcome to another My Theme Shop video screencast. In this video, I'll be sharing with you how to fix the 403 forbidden error in WordPress. Now, usually the most common reasons why you might get this type of error is because of some sort of security plugin, something that's poorly configured, something that's just not working and it's causing conflicts. And sometimes a security plugin that may not work with your type of WordPress version or a WordPress theme or plugin can trigger this type of error. So in this video, I'm going to show you three solutions that we can use to try to fix this error. It's very simple, but it's one of those things that it's good to go step by step to make sure we don't miss anything. So before we get started, it's recommended that you have a backup of your WordPress website just in case something goes wrong. Now, sometimes the idea of backing up your own system can seem very technical and something that goes right over your head. But luckily, My Theme Shop has a solution for you. Simply go to MyThemeShop.com and then look for plugins. Under the plugins, there is a MyWP Backup Pro and a MyWP Backup. Based on your needs, you can pick the right plugin that's going to simply help you back up your system automatically. This makes it super easy in the event that you need to make a backup or you need to reinstall a backup. Again, this is super simple and very easy to do with this type of plugin. Okay, so for one of the first things we're going to look at is a security plugin. Now, if you go to your plugins and you look at the type of plugins you have installed and activated, do any of them seem like a security plugin? Now, if you have a lot of plugins, you may have to go one by one to figure out if one is a security plugin because, again, they could be causing an issue in terms of an IP address issue or another kind of authorization issue. So if you do not have a plugin, then obviously this might not be the area of concern, but it's always good to have a good security plugin. Now, we recommend WordFence. So all you have to do is go to your plugins and click Add New. In the keyword box, simply type in security. This will bring up a lot of different plugin options. And of course, the number one is WordFence. And as you see here, there's over 1 million people using this plugin. So obviously, you know it must be good. And what's great about this plugin is very simple to use, and there's a lot of things inside of it that's really going to help you keep your website secure. So say for an example, though, you do have a plugin installed. So say you have a plugin installed and simply not working correctly, or maybe you just added it and now is causing the 403 error. We simply need to go in and deactivate this. Now, it could be something where you can simply just go in through your admin panel and deactivate this, and that works great. But obviously, if you're having the issue where you cannot even access your website or the page, then we need to do this manually. All you have to do is log in via FTP. I'm using FileZilla. Simply go to your content folder. Now look for plugins. And now look for the plugin that you think is causing the issue. Again, if you just uploaded a plugin, you're going to know which one kind of caused the issue. So all you have to do is click on it and then just rename it. So if you right click, go to rename. And now just add something that you can remember to know that it's something different. I'm going to put underscore old. And now I'm going to save it. And what this does is act automatically deactivates this plugin. So now I should just be able to access the website because if it was blocking me before and now it's deactivated, I should be able to log in and then I can delete this plugin. Now, of course, if you do not know which plugin is causing the issue, it could be that you have to go plugin by plugin until you find the one that's doing it. And again, a plugin may not be the culprit that's causing the conflict. So let's look at another issue. So there's a good chance that maybe you have a file permissions issue. Now, this is very common, especially if you have a new web server or a new website install and things like this. Sometimes that you just simply do not have permission to access something. Maybe it's uploading an image. Maybe it's going to a specific page. So we need to change the file permissions so that you can access your website. So again, we're going to use FTP. I'm using FileZilla. Now, you can simply go to the area that's causing the issue. Maybe it's the WP admin if you're unable to log in. Maybe it's the WP content if you're unable to upload an image, for an example. So we're just going to simply click on the file that we're trying to work with. We're going to go to the bottom where it says File Permissions. And now I'm going to change the file permissions. Now, I'm going to do this two different times. This first time, I'm going to set the numeric value at 755. Now, I'm going to click to recurse into subdirectories. And this is very important. I'm clicking apply to directories only and clicking OK. So now since we set the directories, we're going to go back in and set the files. Simply go back into the directory or the file that you're working on. I'm going to go back to the WP content folder. And now I'm going to change it to 644. This time, I'm still going to click on recurse into subdirectories. And now instead of last time I did apply to directories only, 
This time, I'm going to apply to files only and save it. Now I can refresh, go to my website, and now I should have the permissions, if I did not have them before, to access my website. Okay, so for our last troubleshooting fix here, if sometimes when you're updating your WordPress website, maybe you're adding you know, different plugins for cache plugins or different kind of speed plugins or just different things like this, they have a tendency to work on your .ht access file. They'll add coding and different things. And so sometimes, you know, something just simply crashes or has a conflict. So we're going to go ahead and make a new .ht access file. But we first have to get rid of the original one. So again, what I would recommend is downloading this first. Again, I'm using FTP and you might use your own file client, what, you know, whatever kind of FTP client you want to use or file manager and cPanel, whatever you want to use. But it's one of those things where when you find this file, Simply try to download it again if you can. That way you have a fresh copy in the event that something does go wrong. Because what we're going to do is we're going to delete this file. So if you can download a copy of this, now we're just going to simply delete this file. Now, if there is a conflict or it was corrupted, now we're just going to simply make a new one. And this is super simple. Go back to your dashboard. We're going to go to settings and then the permalinks. Don't touch anything, basically. Just simply go to the very bottom and click save changes. This will automatically create a brand new .ht access file. And now, if we go back and look, it's brand new, it's fresh, and if it was corrupted, now it should be all clean. Now, of course, these were just three most common ways to troubleshoot the 403 forbidden error that you might be receiving. Hopefully, one of these did help you. But if for some reason, if one of these did not help you and you're still having the problems, you may simply need to contact your web hosting provider just in case there's something going on in their server or their domain names or something going on that's causing your issues. Check out these other helpful videos from our channel. All the videos are in-depth and helpful to not only someone starting out with WordPress, but even to advanced users. Also, Please subscribe to our channel by clicking on the subscribe button if you have not done so already. Thank you again for watching, and if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to ask them by clicking on the support link provided.